sound doctrine so uh, we'll a couple of minutes out so we'll let you enjoy that sorry I don't have the counter up on the screen just uh, in all the hustle and bustle trying to get there I didn't get the lights fixed either but I guess that's why we have young trustees right
to everyone tonight. Glad that you're with us. Hope you've enjoyed Sound Doctrine. I've enjoyed them for years. All right, we'll tell them to go away. All right, we're going to get everything set back up. Yeah, we're going to sing a song or two. All right, now Miss Katie picked these songs, so if I mess up, it's her fault. Oh, now this is one of Dad, what was one of my dad's favorite songs. The title of the song is Come and Die.
to see y'all today. Glad that you're here. Uh, we've got a very special uh, object lesson for you today. Now, Miss Katie, make sure you're still up there. Yeah. Can you, am, I, am I on the screen there? Can you see me? Oh, that's right. We're behind. All right. Um, I, I hope I'm in the, in, in, the, in the shot anyway. All right. We've got a very special object lesson for you today. Uh, I have brought something. Very, matter of fact, Miss Katie's going to come down here and try the treat uh, that I have brought for, for y'all today. I have a very, very special. Here, here let, let me get it. All right. Here we go. All right. Here we go. Can you see that? Very, very special treats today. What is it? that's that's uh okay, all right. Miss Katie's not going to eat any of these. These are <laughs> these are dog treats. All right. Uh, matter of fact, when I got these out of the, of the cupboard to bring them with me today, my little puppy dog, uh, Miss Snickers, she went crazy. Uh, I got them out and I shook the box, which was a was a mistake. Uh, I shook the box and boy, here she come running, uh, and she did what she always does when she wants a snack, uh, and and she she sat pretty. She sat down on her on her hunches. She got up, you know, put her paws up, you know, and, say, and just sat there just expecting a treat for doing something nice, you know. Uh, uh, it, it's funny. Uh, we, we laugh at, at the little dog all the time because at night when it's time to go to bed, we've trained her. She sleeps in her little box in her crate at night. And the way we trained her to go in there at night was we give her a treat. I give her a treat every night when she goes to bed. So... Uh, I, can, I can look at her and ask her if it's time, and she'll jump and run to that box and get in that crate, and she's ready for her treat. Uh, we've trained her that way, okay? So, so these dog treats, that's, that's what really what we use them for, uh, as, as to train them, right? Uh, they do something good, they get a treat. They do something right, they get a treat. Uh, we teach them a new trick, uh, they get a treat. Uh, that's how we train our dogs, Unfortunately, too many times, that's the way Christians look at God in prayer and living our life. We think if we'll do good, God will give us a treat. We think if we pray and we read our Bible, then God will reward us for doing good. It's almost like we've trained our dog with the dog treat. All right? Now, what we've got to do is we've got to understand it is not God's desire for us to do good just to get something from the Lord. We've got to learn that God wants us to do right because it's right and because we understand that our heart needs to be right with God. And we do it not to get something from the Lord, not to get a treat or not to get a good job or a, a pat on the back or an allowance for mom and dad. No, we do it because it's the right thing to do. Had you ever heard of a, 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 a fellow in the Bible by the name of Job? There's a whole book in the Bible with his name on it. Job or Job, either one of those anyway. And in the book of Job, have you ever read the book of Job? You know what it's about? Now, I don't have time to go into the whole story, but Job lost everything that he had. Job had a lot of bad stuff happen to him all at once. You know, Mama told me there'd be days like this. She just didn't tell me there'd be this many this close together, right? I mean, bad things happened to him all at one time. But Job said something in Job chapter number one that really ought to be our attitude and our heart. And after all of these bad things happened, and he lost everything, he had lost all of his herds, all of his animals, he lost all of his crops, all of his plants that he had planted for the, the year that he was farming, he, he, he lost 10 kids, uh, he just, and he lost everything. You know what Job said? Let me read it to you. Let me, my Bible's right here. Let me get it. See? I'm going to read it to you. Here's what Job said. Let me get my glasses. Here's what Job said. Job chapter 1, verse number 21. Here at the end of the, that verse, here's what he says, okay? He says, The Lord giveth. Oh, 
He said, the Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. See, he had learned that it wasn't when I do something good, God blesses me. It wasn't when something good happens, I can be happy. It was no God's good and he's good all the time. And I just want to trust him. Let's not treat God like our little puppy dogs do. And they'll be good for a treat. God, I'll be good if you'll do something for me. No, that's not the right spirit or the right attitude. The right spirit is I'm just going to do right because it's right no matter what. How about it today? Will you just do right? Amen. All right, we're going to get back into our song service. Let me climb back up here. We're going to sing one more song together. Um, and I don't know, we might have a special. I don't even think about that. Did you think about that? I'll be glad when we have a piano player and a song leader up here. Amen. It's coming. It's coming. All right, so we're going to sing. Uh, Miss Kay's got one more song picked out for us. Right, she's laughing at me. 53 years old, I got two pair of glasses, can't see out of either one of them. All right. Oh, this is a very familiar song. This is Revive Us. Again, y'all sing along. We praise thee, O God, for the spirit of thy love, for Jesus who died and is now born above. Hallelujah, by the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, by the glory. Revive us again. We praise thee, O God, for thy spirit of life who has shown us our Savior and scattered our night. Hallelujah, by the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, by the glory. Revive us again. All glory and praise to the Lamb that here as we get ready for uh, the uh, preaching time tonight. Uh, let's talk about, very quickly, uh, let's discuss uh, how things are going to go Sunday. All right, let me give you a couple of things about Sunday. Uh, I, I need to ask you a question first, and I need your feedback. We, uh, you don't need to do it right now uh, while we're in service, uh, because I won't be able to... Uh, well, amen, Miss Bella wants those treats. Uh, Mr. Brother Jerry was, was saying Miss Bella would have them. Amen. Well, Katie didn't want them. Snickers would want them too, Brother Jerry. Uh, matter of fact, she wore them before I left the house. Uh, hey, we're, Sunday, we're, we're, Miss Christy and I were discussing what we're going to do Sunday for our Sunday school time. If we do it at 4.30, uh, then those that want to stay home and watch Sunday school, we're gonna have, there's no way they're going to get here for prayer time. Which is, which is fine. If you want to just drive in afterwards and miss prayer time, that's up to you. Uh, or if you come in for Sunday school, then you're going to be here for two and a half hours, uh, which is fine with me. I, you know, we'll just have to make sure we take precautions of cleaning and all that kind of thing. 
Uh, so, so that's an option. Uh, or Miss Christie just suggested that maybe do it. We could do night, uh, uh, Sunday school. Uh, you know, she suggested that I could do Sunday school at nine o'clock. I'm going to get her to come up here and help me uh, at nine o'clock Sunday morning, and we could broadcast it. Uh, that way, we'd go from nine to nine forty-five, uh, and that would give you an hour uh, to to finish getting ready or whatever you need to do and get on uh, on the church. So. Uh, you know, just think about it, pray about it, whatever would fit your schedule best. If you would chime in and let me know, uh, I would appreciate that. Uh, that'll help us to kind of make the decisions of what we want to do. I know this, 1045, 6 o'clock, we are having church here in the building. Amen. I'm excited about that. I hope you can see that I'm excited about that. Uh, I, I, I love preaching. Uh, I don't mind preaching to Katie. She needs a lot of preaching. Uh, but uh, I, I, preaching to empty chairs is difficult. Uh, so I look forward to, to having everybody here uh, in the building. So we'll, I know we'll do that. So just Sunday school, if you'll just kind of give me your thoughts about when would be the best time. I know some won't come. I understand that. They want to stay home and watch it. That's fine. I, I know that some will not be uh, uh, feel comfortable coming to church at all Sunday. That's fine. That's, that's, that, that's, that's your call. Uh, you do what you feel like you need to do for your safety uh, and for your health. Uh, I, I know Brother Larry, they told him to stay home until he has his knee surgery. I, I understand that. So, so we just want to be very careful about what we do. So um, now we are going to start. Now, now I'm excited about it and fired up. I, I, I want as many people to be involved as possible. But we're going to start Sunday night or Sunday in Sunday school. We are going to start that church history study. What I, I really would encourage as many folks in the church to get involved in that. I mean, it'll help you. Uh, it'll be a blessing to you just to see, uh, uh, just to see from a historical standpoint uh, how all of that happened and, and looking at the books and, and all the different things. Uh, and we'll, boy, we'll, just, uh, 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 we'll just see how that's going to go. So uh, we've got some that, that, are, that are chiming in already. So we'll uh, we'll work on that. But here's what we do know. We do know that at 1045, we're going to have worship service. Uh, and then at 6 o'clock, we're going to have worship service. Uh, and we're going to have it set up this way. Now, I'm working on this. I don't have all the details worked out. Uh, but at, at what we're going to try to do is we're going to have try to have two greeters at the door. And their job will be to open and close the door. So when you come in, you don't have to touch anything. You'll come in the front door. You'll come in clean. Won't have to touch anything. Uh, you'll walk into the foyer. Uh, you'll come down to the front of the doors coming into the sanctuary. We'll have some ushers back there. Uh, and then what we'll do from there is we will uh, usher you. We will seat you uh, here in the building somewhere. Now, uh, you know, I mean, now we're not going to tell you where to sit specifically. But, uh, but we just want to try to make sure that we're directing traffic, that we're not getting folks crossing paths and all of those things uh, that we need not do. Uh, and then at the end of service, what we'll do is we'll have um, offering plate back probably on the table in the, uh, the, the cross, uh, crossroads, I guess what you call that, uh, where, the, where the, the halls cross there, uh, where they all meet. Uh, the table will put a, a plate there. Uh, and then as you leave and as you are escorted out, we'll ask everybody to stay seated and we'll have the ushers. We'll probably start in the back and they'll come and they'll get that family unit. Uh, and they'll uh, usher that family unit out. Again, we're just trying to keep everybody safe uh, and do everything as best as we can uh, coming in and out of the building Sunday morning, Sunday night. So that's the plan. Uh, and I'll have all this in writing and we'll send it all out by Friday. So uh, that's, that's what we're looking at. Uh, I think Brother Jerry has agreed to sing Sunday morning. He'll be singing the special. Uh, and then I'm still working on uh, the PM special uh, uh, as well. Uh, so uh, I don't know if Miss Emma saw my text or not. <clears throat> Put her on the spot. <laughs> anyway, uh, is that, is that, can I do that? Can I? Uh, uh, well, see, I, I know Miss Emma and, and I know Miss Emma's heart. And if she didn't want to, she'd just tell me. She wouldn't be around a bush. So, uh, uh, Miss Emma, if you didn't see that, I did text you and ask you if you'd be interested in singing Sunday night. Uh, so that's the plan. Uh, and, and we'll do that. Uh, Sunday, uh, and then we'll see how that works, uh, and then we'll move on to uh, the next Sunday, Wednesday night, and, so, and we'll just kind of adjust as we have uh, opportunity. All right, so that's the plan. So that took a few minutes, and that was our 
our time for our special tonight. All right, take your Bible, turn to Matthew chapter number six. Matthew chapter number six. I already see some that are voting for nine o'clock uh, Sunday morning. So uh, we'll we'll do whatever whatever the consensus is. All right, Matthew chapter number six. We're going to pick up with the thought that we've been looking at uh, the last couple of weeks. I hope you've enjoyed this. I always enjoy preaching this. I have preached this subject uh, several times over the years. Like I said, I was introduced to this pattern of prayer uh, probably over 20 years ago. Uh, Dr. Johnny Pope is the one that introduced me to this pattern of prayer. Uh, and through uh, just being around him and hearing him preach the, 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 the basics uh, of this outline, I, and, I, and I started using that and started uh, uh, incorporating that into my prayer time uh, and it just uh, opened up a whole new avenue for me uh, in seeking the Lord and, 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 and my personal time of prayer. So we've been talking about the pattern of prayer. We've talked, first of all, let's read. Uh, let's go ahead and read and then we will uh, uh, jump into uh, our, our, our thoughts for tonight. Matthew chapter number 6, verse number 9. The Bible says this, After this manner therefore pray ye, all right, sorry. Got a text message to shut the phone down. Had to start it back up. Oh, right. boy, it disappeared. <laughs> I'm back. Okay. Sorry, I got a text message and shut my phone down. All right. Uh, I'm glad Miss Kate is here. I just kept right on preaching. I never know. Uh, well, I would have when the computer shut down. All right, so let's go back and let's pick it up. Start reading again. Verse 9. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now, we've read this passage several times called the model prayer. Uh, some inadvertently call it the Lord's Prayer. Now, that's John 17. That's a whole other message, a whole other preaching series. But in Matthew chapter 6, we find this model prayer. Notice what he said. Uh, in verse number 9, after this manner, therefore, pray ye. So he's given us this model in, in, in Matthew 6. Now, we've already dealt with the first two points of this. We've talked about number one. The first point is that, that rendezvous with God. And we saw that in verse number 9, where he said this, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So we're talking about a rendezvous with the Lord. Now, who knows? Who can tell me in the comments? Now, come on. Who can tell me what that rendezvous meant? What is a rendezvous? If we're going to rendezvous with the Lord, what, what are we talking about? What do we mean there when we talk about that? All right? Now, I can't wait and see who's going to put it in the comments. I've got to move on. But uh, put it in there if you know what it is. That's right. It means that's a place where lovers meet. It's just we're meeting with the lover of our soul. So we're having that rendezvous with him. Uh, and then we learned in verse number 10, the Bible says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. So number two, we learned about the idea of this reigning through the Lord. And it was the idea of just allowing the Lord to reign and work through us. And we learned there were four things uh, that we talked about last week uh, about this idea of the Lord reigning through us. And those four things were, we talked about our righteousness, we talked about our peace, we talked about our joy, and we talked about our power. All right? Those are the four things that we dealt with last week. If you missed the message, uh, go back and, and you can look at that. Uh, and you can see that we talked about those four areas in allowing God to reign through me. Remember we used Philippians chapter 2, uh, and it was chapter 2 verse 12, where it talked about working out that which God had put in, working out your own salvation. It was the idea of working out what God had put in us, that's our righteousness. Then we talked about our peace, uh, which was uh, contentment regardless of circumstances. Uh, and then our joy was the idea of rejoicing in the Lord. And then our power uh, was being in the Spirit of God, being filled with the Spirit, and seeing the, the fruit of the Spirit in our life. All right, so that catches us up uh, to where we are. So we're going to pick up in verse number 11 tonight. Verse number 11, and the Bible said this. We've already read it, but let's go back and look at it again. It says, give us this day our daily bread. You ever thought about this? God's not going to give you 
grace today for tomorrow's problems? How many times have, have I said, have you said, have we thought, I don't know how they handle this situation. I, I don't know how someone handles the loss of a child. I don't know how someone handles the sickness that they're going through. I don't understand how someone handles the, the handicap that they're dealing with. I, well, listen, God will not give us grace to handle tomorrow's problems today. Look at what he said in verse number 11. He said, give us this day our daily bread. So we start talking about this aspect of prayer. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about prayer here. Uh, so we're dealing with this idea of receiving, receiving from the Lord. Give us this day. So at this point in our prayer, now we're beginning to ask the Lord uh, to do a work in our life. We've, we've fellowshiped with him. We've celebrated the name of Christ in that rendezvous with him. Uh, then we've uh, asked the Lord to uh, put us in the very center of his will and that idea of him reigning through us and, and, and his power in our life. So now we're going to begin to ask. We want to receive some things from the Lord. And, and here's the idea of this, that idea of uh, give us this day our daily bread. Now, uh, we're going to jump around a little bit, and I, and I don't want to be too disjointed here, but I, I just want to get this point across. This is not the place where we're going to spend a lot of time asking for a lot of stuff. This is not the place where we're going to start praying for that new car uh, or that new house. Or that new spouse? No, wait, no, no that's not, that's, that's just, that, that was a joke, okay? That's, this is not where we're going to be, look at what he says, give us this day what? Our daily bread. He, he, he said what we need to do is understand, we start asking from the Lord, it's that God, you would provide our very basic needs. Anything beyond our basic needs is an extra blessing of the Lord. If we have a place to sleep and we have clothes on our back and we have uh, 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 food in our, on our table, we are most blessed of God. He says, give us this day our daily bread. So we begin to pray. We begin to ask the Lord to, to center us, if you will. We begin to ask him to help us to understand uh, that, that life is not about all of the extras. It's, and I don't even know some of these names anymore. If I start trying to call these names of the, some of these, you, you know, uh, the, these, uh, what's the, uh, the, the, the purses that are out there now. I mean, they, I don't know some of the names of my daughter not helping me either. Uh, you, know, you know, some of these high dollar purses and so, some of these, you know, thousand dollar suits and, and some of these five, six, seven hundred dollar shoes. And hey, listen, you know, if you can afford those kind of things, God bless you. I mean, that's all right. Uh, but that's done. The clothes don't make the man. The purse doesn't make the woman. We've got to understand, God's trying to get us back to the very basics in our life, and he's trying to help us understand that what we need to do is we need to get back to just the very simplistic life that he's given us. He, he said we need to be centered in the very will of God. He, in every aspect of our life, I've written out a couple of things here. Uh, for me, when I'm praying and I get to this place in my, my prayer life and I, I look at this verse of scripture and I, and I do in, in my prayer list, I've got these verses written down and I get there and I look at this and I say, give us this day our daily bread. One of the things that I try to, to answer or, or focus on, and I've got it written down in my prayer list is this. God, you keep me centered in the very will of God for my life. See, I need to be okay with God doing things. Hey, listen, if I never drive a Cadillac, that's okay. Well, I used to be something. I'm not sure that that's really something anymore. Uh, now, you know, if it's not a Lamborghini, it's, it's, you know, it's just another car. As long as I listen, somebody was, somebody, <laughs> I have call this now, I'm not going to do that to him. Uh, somebody was messing with my truck this morning. He said, you know, you need, you need to get rid of that Ford. And I said, buddy, tell you what, that one thing about that Ford, it's paid for. 
I'll drive it till the wheels fall off of it. Amen? We've got to get back to just that basis. God, help me be centered in the very will of God. If your will for my life is to live uh, on the wrong side of the tracks, God, I'll live there and I'll do what you want me to do. If it's to live in, you know, on the other side of the tracks and in a huge hole, what God, whatever your will for my life is. Help me to be in the very center of your will in my devotion life. And I wrote this, this is in my prayer list. In my devotion life, in my work life, in my giving life, God, you just help me to be in the very center of your will. Because if I'll get in the center of his will, then he'll be able to bless me and I'll be able to receive from the Lord what God wants to give me. Few verses I want to give you right here. Romans chapter 12, verse number 1, the Bible says this I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Now, these are very familiar verses, and that's why I didn't ask you to turn there. Uh, but we find Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. It just says this. Hey, listen, you need to we need to present our bodies a living sacrifice. God, here am I, use me. Whatever you want me to do, wherever you want me to go. We were well, we, we we got a phone call this week from a, a dear friend of ours that uh, that's about like family. I mean, she's about as close to a daughter as you can get without being born into the family. And uh, and I'm not gonna tell you how late they stayed up talking, but I went to bed. But uh, I'm just gonna leave that right there. Uh, but anyway, uh, they were talking uh, about all this. And now I forget where I'm going with all this. Uh, they were talking about an a, 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 a incident that happened in their lives. Uh, and, and my mind just went blank. God did not want me to say that. Save you, Miss Christy. All right, so we'll go back to this idea of, of just presenting our bodies a living sacrifice, giving ourselves to the Lord, being in the very center of the will of God. He says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, Verse number 21. No, now it's familiar. So listen. And the, uh, and the world passeth away in the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God. This is 1 John 2, 17. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. When we start talking about receiving from the Lord, it's not that we get stuff. It's that we receive the right spirit and the right attitude and the right heart from God. God, make me a living sacrifice. Give me the will just to turn myself over to you. Help me that I will understand uh, that uh, But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Help me just to be centered in the very will of God for my life. Now listen, we're talking about praying here. We're talking about getting along with God and connecting with God and, and doing something in our life that's going to change our direction. Now the problem with prayer is we've gotten in this habit that all we want to do is we want to ask God to bless these and bless those and give me this and help me here. Then we forget that prayer is more about communing with God and less about asking God for stuff. Now we're in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse number 21. The Bible says this, and, and if a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. So number one, we start talking about this idea of receiving from the Lord, acting as a receptacle for what God wants to give us in our life. Here's the difference in receiving from the Lord. It's not that we go to God with a laundry list of things we want. It's that we go to God with an empty heart and an empty vessel and say, God, you fill it with what you want to put in it. So number one, we're talking about being in the very center of God's will when we start talking about receiving from the Lord. Number two, we talk about this idea of confidence of the Lord's provision. We've got to have confidence. See, here's the problem. We don't want to be an open receptacle for God because too many of us don't trust God to put in there what we want Him to put in. Back in Gulfport, there was a a yogurt. I don't eat a whole lot of yogurt, but there was a yogurt shop back in, in, in Gulfport. 
in that yogurt shop, you can go into that yogurt shop and, and they give you a cup. And you go through that yogurt shop and you get the, the basic yogurt in that cup. And then you begin to put all the stuff on it you want. Goes on that cup. And, and, you know, and then you then and what most folks didn't realize was you had to pay by, by weight at the end. They were a little surprised when they got to the end, you know, when, when they brought that five gallon bucket up there and put it over with all the stuff in it. You know. Uh, but, but here's the idea. Uh, would, would, if you went in there, would you want me to fix your yogurt or would you want to do it? Let, let me ask Miss Katie what she thinks. Miss Katie, uh, would, would you like me to fix it or would you want to fix it? I fix it. All right. She's going to want to fix her own. Why? <laughs> because she knows what she wants and she knows what she would like to have in her ice cream or her yogurt. We do the same thing with God. We go to God and we say, oh, no, 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 wait, wait, God, I want to fill up my own life. God, I want to fill up my own cup. I want to fill up my own vessel. I want to put in here what I want in it. I want, I want this type of friend. Or I want this type of spouse. Or I want this kind of car or this kind of house or I want to live in this neighborhood or in this town or do this kind of job or, or, or you know, have this kind of relationship. And, and what we do is we, we tell God what we want in our cup when really what we need to do is say, God, here's my vessel. You fill it up with what you know I need to have. We need to be confident in the Lord's provision. Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. That's a very familiar, very familiar verse. And, and we hear it preached and talked about all the time. But notice what it says. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And, and we use that verse quite a bit. And we and rightly so. God will supply all our need. But, but I think the difficulty that we run into is we forget that that word there is need. God's going to supply our need. And we've got to be confident in the provision of God that he's going to give us exactly what he knows we need in our life. Now, we're talking about it, and I'm preaching to a full house here now. Uh, you, you, we, what we're doing is we've got to get to the place to where we trust God. We say we trust God, but do we really? Third John. Third John. Verse number two, just one chapter. Third John, verse number two, the Bible says this, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prosper. We'll trust the Lord. We'll trust that he is. We'll seek his face, and we'll bring him an empty vessel. He'll fill it for his honor and his glory. So this idea of receiving from the Lord. We're asking him to give us this day our daily bread. We're asking him to keep us in the center of his will. We're asking him to help us to continue to be confident in the Lord's provision. And then thirdly, we're asking this. Uh, we're, we're asking the Lord that he would help us to be continuous in our pursuit. Continuous in our pursuit. We'll just stay with it. I'm not going to read the passage. It's a long passage for sake of time. But uh, Matthew 7, we'll read this verse and then we'll talk about the other one. Matthew 7, verse 7, the Bible says this. We've already talked about it. Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and, and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. And the idea there is you just keep doing. You keep knocking. You keep seeking. You keep going. And then in Luke chapter 18, verse 1 through 8. You go through and you find the story of the woman, the the the, uh, the woman that just uh, stayed after the judge, and uh, and and he she she just stayed with it, and she just stayed after him, and she just continued and and stayed. Listen, when we go to the Lord, let's just stay at it, let's just stay with it, let's just be continuous. God, I I, I need you, I want you, I need you to fill me. I, I want to see your blessings in my life. Give me this day our daily bread. Give me what you know I need for this day. Then look at verse number 12 of our text. He says this, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Forgive us our debts. I'm going to preach this real fast because most folks get hung up right here. 
Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. What does that mean? We're going to use this word right here. We're talking about returning to the Lord. Returning to the Lord. What does that mean? That means coming to Him in repentance. Coming to Him and seeking forgiveness for how we've lived and what we've done. Aren't you glad the Bible teaches us that God forgives and forgets? Oh, aren't you glad that the Bible teaches us that there's a sea of forgetfulness? <laughs> that God throws our sin that's been forgiven in that sea of forgetfulness and posts a sign that says, please don't swim. Amen. I like that. Forgive us our debts. There's a couple of things that we want to think about while we're praying and get to this verse. And get to this part about returning to the Lord. Now this is the place. This is the place now where we really. Uh, listen we've praised God. We've worshipped him. We've celebrated him. Uh, in, in, in that rendezvous with him. Uh, we've talked about the idea of just reigning. And letting him fill us. And, uh, and letting that Holy Spirit of God be real unto us. We, 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 we've talked about. We've prayed about this close relationship with him. Uh, we've talked about him providing for us daily. Such as things that we need. Uh, and now we're going to start into this idea of confession. As we're asking the Lord to bring us back. Uh, return us unto the Lord. What did David say? Uh, 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 Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Renew a right spirit within me. Give us this day. Or oh, forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. Number one. It deals with a confession to God. A confession to God. 1 John 1, 9, the Bible says this, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. See, the idea right here is we've come to a point in time in our prayer life where it's time just to say, Lord, would you deal with me? See, the, the, the three things that we've done already uh, has prepared our hearts. It's brought us into a communion and a closeness with God. It's helped us, helped us to recognize who He is. It's helped us to recognize who we are. And it's helped us to recognize what He's doing in my life. And, and when I see those three things, it brings me to a place of just confession before God. God, I'm a sinner before a holy God. And I need forgiveness. God, would you please deal with my Heart. What did David say? Search me, O God. Oh, that we would allow God to search us. And we confess, deal with me, deal with my attitudes, deal with my actions. Pinpoint in my life those areas where I've done the wrong thing, I've thought the wrong fault, I've jumped to the wrong conclusion. God, deal with me. Help me to get right with you. And then from that, now listen, from that, the next step in that parade is this. As we are returning to the Lord and we're confessing our sin and we're getting right with Him, now what we're going to do is we're going to say, God, give me a compassion Give me a compassion to others. Brother Pope helped me with this statement. Of all the statements that I heard in this series on prayer, this probably was one of the life-changing statements that I got from Dr. Pope. Now, I'm telling you, I'm telling you up front, I'm trying not to steal anything from him. All right? He said that. I wrote it down. I've kept it in my prayer list for 20 years. And having compassion to others, I wrote this down. Deal with others as God has dealt with you. Deal with others as God has dealt. We want God to be compassionate with me. We want God to be forgiving with me. We want God to be loving with me. Why don't we deal with others like we want God to deal with us or how God has dealt with us? I, I, think, there's, there's a, I think there's something in the Bible that says uh, do unto others 
as you would have them to do unto you. Well, that principle can go further than that. Let's do unto others as God has done to us. Let's be quick to forgive. He's forgiven us. Let's be quick to help. He's helped us. Let's be quick to be kind and to be gentle. He's been kind and gentle with us. Matthew chapter 18. Let's turn over there. We're not going to read the whole passage. Uh, it, it's quite lengthy. But in Matthew chapter 18, we can read the first couple of verses and you'll get the, the understanding of what, what we're looking at. In Matthew chapter 18, verse number 21, the Bible says this, Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till seven times. And I'm sure Peter thought that was fairly generous. Till seven times. Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Now I'm going to say a couple of things here just for sake of time, but you can go back and read this passage and it'll bear this out. Number one, you need to understand, God did not say, if they ask you to forgive them, you forgive them. It's not what he said. He said, how many times my brother sinned against me and I forgive him? Notice what else this passage did not say. This passage did not say, well, when he uh, does fruit, fruit meat for repentance, when he shows me that he has that he's repented, and he shows me, then I'll forgive you. That's not what the Bible says. We wonder why we struggle in our prayer life, and we wonder why we struggle in receiving things from the Lord and returning back to Him and having a close relationship. It's because we won't forgive others. And if we won't forgive others, how can we expect God to forgive us? I think that's in the Bible somewhere. So I want to give you this last thought about this idea in Matthew chapter 6 about forgiving us our debts as we forgive our debtors. We as Christians, we need to be, we need to be the thermometer. No, we need to be the thermostat in the room. There's a difference between a thermometer and a thermostat. You know what the difference is? What, what does a, therm a thermometer do? It checks the temperature. It can check the temperature of a person. It can take, check the temperature of a room. Uh, you know, we have a temperature gauge on our vehicle. It, 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 you know, it, ch it checks the temperature. Too many Christians are thermometers. They check the temperature of those around them and then they match that temperature. That's not what God wants from us. God wants us to be a thermostat. What's a thermostat do? Well, a thermostat has a thermometer in it. But what does a thermostat do? A thermostat will check the temperature in a vehicle or in a room and then it will influence that room one way or another. It will exert some influence to warm that room up, cool that room down. See, as Christians, we need to be the thermostat in the room. James chapter 1, let me give you a couple of verses on this, and I know uh, you're going to have to think on this a little bit. I understand that. James chapter 1, verse number 20, the Bible says, For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. How, how many of you, I don't think I have it written in here in the sick of this, but no. How, how many of us will agree that the Bible talks about this in the book of Proverbs, that it says that a soft answer, I didn't write the, word, the verse down, but it says a soft answer turneth away wrath. Right? You got to try that sometimes. You got to try that sometimes. Somebody come at you with uh, angry and upset, and you just speak softly, talk nice to them, 
Be very, be very genuine, very polite. I guarantee you, it'll diffuse the situation. No, what's about what, what? What do we want to do? Watch the flesh. The flesh is, buddy. You come at me. I'm coming right back at you, just as hard or harder than you came at me. There's a verse we talked about the other day. It said this: Only by pride cometh contention. What is that? That's pride. That's pride. I, I'm going to have my way, have my say, give you a piece of my mind. Uh, you know, usually when you hear, hear people say something about giving them a piece of their mind, they might want to keep what they have because they may not have a whole lot to give away. Smile right there. Amen, real me. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Be a third, don't be a thermometer. Don't act just like everybody else. Have a piece of God in your own. We find this scripture as well, Psalm 141, verse number 3, the Bible says this, Set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth. Keep the door of my lips. Well, you know, preacher, it's just my, my character. It's just my personality. I just can't help. Hold watch. Hold watch. Yes, you can help what you say and what you do. Yes, we can. The only reason we do some things and say some things is because we want to. Preaching with the But we're listen, we're talking about trying to get our prayers answered. We're, we're talking about trying to, to, to meet with God and commune with Him. And what does our world need? It needs answered prayer. Well, how are we going to get it? By walking with Him and letting Him influence us and letting Him be real in our life. Last verse. <laughs> You ought, to, you ought to memorize this verse. I think most of, my, most of the folks in my family have it memorized. Psalm 119, verse 165. What's the Bible say? Now, I'm not making this up. You go look it up. It's in there. Great peace have they which love thy law. And nothing shall offend them. Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Preacher, how does, that, how does that tie back to prayer? I'm glad you asked. As we rendezvous with the Lord and we meet with the lover of our soul, and we ask the Lord to Reign through us and fill us with his spirit. And we are receiving daily those things that God knows that we need. And we have a confidence in God. Now what we're doing is we're returning unto him and saying, God, forgive me for where I've sinned. Help me to live in a manner that's pleasing unto you. Help me to do what you want me to do. Help me to be the man you want me to be. Help me to be the influence that you know that you need in this world. Help me to fill that place. Here it is. Hang on. That you have created me for. Our world, our society, our family and friends need someone who knows how to get a hold of God. Our country right now our country right now needs churches know how to get in touch with God. So here's my question. If your family was counting on you and you were the only one that could pray for them, could you get a hold of God? Or is there something in the way that's hindering 
that relationship that's hindering you receiving from God. What others need. My desire, it's my desire to be, I, I would love to reach the end of my life, be wheeled into this church building and laid out here in a casket in front of this auditorium, have somebody walk by and say, well, he knew how to get a hold of God. takes commitment it takes forgiveness <laughs> and it takes practice Father we're thankful for the day what a joy just to be able to bring your word I, I, I am so looking forward to the time that we have this church house full again and I pray that you'll have your will and your way Father that you'll help us Help us to focus our hearts on our prayer life. Help us to look deep within ourselves. Help us to ask the question, am I trusting God to provide what I need? Or am I too busy asking for what I want? Help me to answer the question, am I willing to allow the Lord to search me. See if there be any wicked way in me. And when that way is pinpointed, am I willing to confess and turn to Christ? Father, I'm thankful for the praying church that we are. Father, we need more. We need more individuals praying. We need those of us that do pray to find that deeper relationship with Christ. I'm reminded of that old great that great old message. Somebody touched heaven for me who have we touched heaven for we love you in Jesus name my prayer tonight is that you will examine your prayer life and that we will seek the Lord alright we're looking forward to a great time Sunday uh, you'll be getting more instructions but just remember uh, we are going to make the decision about Sunday school. I've seen several already sound off as to where what they would like or what they think would fit better. I, I'm beginning to kind of think the same on the same lines as, as what I'm seeing. So uh, we'll talk about that as we get a little bit closer. Uh, do remember uh, the, the guidelines. We'll get all that lined out. We'll have everybody in place. We'll have everything going on that needs to take place for Sunday. Looking forward to that. Sunday morning, 1045. Uh, and then Sunday night at 6. Uh, and then we'll just look for the Lord to carry us from there. Now, they're saying we can only do 33% of our capacity, all right? The way the building is set up right now, we can seat 250 in here right now. 33% uh, of that is 82 and a half. Now, I don't know who that half is, uh, but you know, we can get 82 and a half. So somebody's got to stand in the doorway, half in, half out. But uh, I, I think that'll be okay. All right, uh, we're excited about what the Lord's doing. Just continue to pray. Uh, looking forward to his blessings. Do remember our prayer requests, the time of prayer uh, that we have. Uh, we're going to dismiss in prayer tonight. Uh, we, we love you. Uh, after I pray, then I'm going to turn on uh, Sound Doctor as we go out uh, tonight. Hmm? All right, let's pray. Father, again, we're thankful for the day. We love you. Thank you for the good service tonight. Thank you for those uh, that attended. I, I pray that you'll bless them in a very special way. These are our prayer requests that we mentioned.
we ask prayer for. Uh, I do pray that you'll just continue to, to uplift each one uh, and have your hand on them. Uh, pray for our church. Father, give us a great Sunday. I'm so looking forward to be back in our building. So I pray everything will go well for your honor and glory. Uh, Father, help us this week that we might be an influence uh, to someone else along the way. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, I'm going to turn on sound doctor here just for a few minutes, and we'll send you out with them. <laughs>